What's up, everyone? It is the metrics model meeting, April 12th, April 13th. So good evening and good morning to everybody. So it's good to see you all. Uh, Sean has shared the minutes. So if you could take a second and add yourself, that would be great. And tell us what's going on. in your life that'd be cool Sean you're going Dutch mm. <clears throat> to the Netherlands oh <laughs> <laughs> when do you leave Sunday okay you just got back now then I'll come back from there and I'll go to Finland in May it's my global tour is it the same amount of time <laughs> in between trips it's more time in between trips for Finland and yeah yeah and Finland's longer okay <clears throat> well set up your uh amazon dot fi fi, FI, FI yeah. whatever it is and your amazon dot <laughs> yeah Finland's weird I don't even have to order amazon there they just have everything at the corner electronics store all right <laughs> do they have yellow sweatshirts I don't know I, I'll check <laughs> All right, I will turn on my transcription. Sean bought a yellow sweatshirt in. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I, was, I, was like, I didn't catch that at first. Now I get Spain. it. In Spain. And like everybody <clears throat> in Spain basically wears like black and gray. So yeah. Sean stuck out. <laughs> it was the brightest <laughs> person on like every a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to accidentally hit me with their car. <laughs> it's going to be deliberate and with cause. <laughs> All right. So, all right. So, um, I have a few things that I, I would like to talk about. If if you have things you'd like to talk about, if you could add your comments to the agenda, that would be really cool. But I just have a few things. Kind of, it actually stems from Yahui, the stuff that you had shown the last time, and the metrics model that you had shared. I, you know what I'm talking about, um, like community activity or whatever it was. And Elizabeth, some of the toolkit stuff that you had done, and some of the things that I was doing with respect to um, uh, the badging, the, the badging, because I, I, I still am not totally satisfied on our metric model template, and I'd really like some input on this. So um, I can share my screen. <clears throat> and so deep thoughts are <laughs> requested if Deep thoughts from, does anybody remember that from Saturday Night Live? Yeah, deep thoughts with Jack Handy. <laughs> so deep thoughts would be appreciated. So um, the the template that we currently have is, is this. So why it matters, user stories, things you need to deploy this model, metrics that are in the model with kind of an assortment <clears throat> of things in here, references and contributors. And so we've been, if you recall, we've been working on this uh, template because I think once we get this squared away, we have like maybe you know three or four metrics models that could actually start going out into the wild. Um, so this is essentially where we're at. This was based on some original template development, and then um, I think this was built then from Elizabeth some of the work you had done. I think Emma had made some suggestions as well to the template, and we're here. And I, I don't mind this template at all, but it, it does raise a few questions. For me, so um, so here is the so let me give you some context. So, Elizabeth, this is the toolkit that you had been working on. Do you remember this? I do. From a while ago. So, and this was you had done these like um, just particular metrics, you know, code of conduct at event. You should recognize these. <clears throat> then, uh, Yehui, this is the one that. That I think you, I don't know if you had done this alone, but you had put this together, kind of following the same <clears throat> template again, right? Um, yep. And so then this, this was the one, and I'm not, none of them are, are, are bad. I just think we're trying to get them all down into this template form. And looking at the toolkit, looking at what you had done, Yui, and looking at what I had done, it has raised a few questions for me that I'd like, I think would help us all. Um, so basically, I was trying to kind of work my way through this one as well. All right. So one of the questions that I have 
is um oh thanks i that's me um so when we talk about if we are going to use the toolkit approach that would say something like this metric is in the realm of two to four hours and elizabeth i'm not like calling you out on some time thing here but those are sounding like ikea instructions actually now that i <laughs> This, this it was a total shot in the dark. Like I have, I, yeah, just a guess. So, and, and if it's if it it doesn't, I don't particularly care about the time. What I'm what I'm wondering is is, and hopefully this will come across right. Is it the time <clears throat> to like create the things that will be measured, or is it the time that it takes to do the measurement? And what I mean by this is when we do DEI badging like to look for a code of conduct only takes about 10 minutes to make a code of conduct takes like six hours or whatever. And they're two different things. And so I wasn't sure what, where we land on this because in event in the D you get where I'm going probably with this in the DEI event badging, I don't actually make code of conducts. I don't make diversity access tickets. <laughs> I rely on the submission and then I just do the review, which only doesn't take that long. So do people have thoughts on this? Do, you know, I don't know. I think I we should sort it out. With saying why not both? Like, can you just include on the template time to implement and time to uh, maintain? Or time to measure? I don't think yeah. we really, I don't think we really know those times though. And guessing at them is, <laughs> would be a little haphazard. Uh, I'm kind of of the opinion that we should just remove the time component completely. Yeah, I share, I share the same point with Kevin. Do okay. we actually have a um, level of difficulty that we attach to the model? That might be a good replacement. We do. So like in the toolkit, Elizabeth had added this. Perfect. Yep. I think replace it with that. Okay. Maybe we also then instead of the time due emit like Venya just said a measurement difficulty like how difficult is this to measure how difficult is it to get this data maybe yeah. like the time came originally from Emma's yeah idea and so I you know I know that it's not great but like for someone coming in I feel like that piece is super duper helpful if we can manage to figure out how to present that because if I only have you know. A, a few hours extra. I'm, a, I'm an open source maintainer. I got like two hours. What can I do first off the bat? Okay, something that's easy, something that takes two hours. Awesome. You know, I think it just really would help. But I know that obviously that data is not great. Did yeah. you do it in a amount of steps? Yeah. Um, Vinod, what was that? Yeah. The I was saying, like, Hold for example, second. Yeah, what? even in the time component, for example, we are getting the data from Augur or Grimoire Lab. Just setting up the Augur and Grimoire Lab take more than just two and four hours as an example. So giving a time frame will be like too optimistic for a user than the actual scenario be, because they sometimes face a lot of troubleshooting issues just to get the data. Sure, and that's why I think the point of getting <clears throat> A good idea. So if, if we go towards like implementation difficulty and measurement difficulty, I like I wonder about the implementation part. So like in, in the DEI case, I agree it's helpful. But like if we're talking about like time to close an issue, we're not really talking about helping a community implement issue closing things mm -hmm. we're just measuring we're just measuring it we don't really care how it came to be so there we don't really have like we don't go into the community and help them in that regard does that oh, make yeah. sense yeah. agree maybe <clears throat> the implementation of things of like how how to move the needle once you have the measurement how to move the needle or how to um, mm -hmm. you know, get where, where, where you're trying to go. Maybe that that's going to be like a whole other can of worms that we're not even close to getting to really yet. Right. So yeah, it'd that's an excellent point. It'd be interesting to have a section that says this forecasts 
these kind of actions for your community. Uh, quick question. Yeah. Uh, what is the purpose of the toolkit document right now? Are we are we treating this as is this going to be come up with a template? I think. Yeah. So, so that's so I thought we had a template that we were that we were that we were contemplating yeah, so already. Me, yep. So, yep. We do. So let me back up then. So we had Yahui's model from last uh, two weeks ago, which was this one. And um, Emma's model. Yep. And then, well, this is then Elizabeth's <laughs> model playing around with toolkits. This is from maybe a month ago or so. And this is how we were thinking about like implementation. <laughs> we were thinking about just kind of the effort that it takes to approach this. And then, so, so uh, would we would we uh, would we take this document and merge it with our template, or is this a separate document? Well, this I think it would. Yeah, I think it would be, I'm trying to bring things together and I'm just like, it's a little like the data ethics and privacy <laughs> merging of like 10 different documents. They were all kind of saying different things. And I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we capture the work that's been done um, and not create a bunch of documents and just asking ourselves like what, what we need to include. That's it. Hmm. And, and the, the, template that we have kind of has like this stuff in here is kind of toolkitty. I think that Emma's Emma's document, I, th I thought we'd, we discussed that in, 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 uh, at, at pretty good length. And I, I thought we had kind of voted to, to move forward with, with Emma's document as the template. And that's this, what you're uh, seeing. I don't, yeah, that's not, no, that's not okay. Emma's model, well, that's is what's it? in here. So um, which which one was the one that Emma did? This is, okay. this is why I, case in point that our templates need to be at the top of all documents. <laughs> I stand by that and recommendation. Emma's document has a detail on the each metric, like a, there was a tabular form for each metric. Why this metric? How this is going to support or some narrative around that metric to uh, guide the story like through the model. Yeah, and then the, the toolkit was built into the the template there as well. So we're yeah we're missing. Uh, maybe let's take a moment and try to find Emma's document. There's an issue in the uh, working group, <clears throat> metrics model working group. Here I'll link. I think this is what we're looking for. Maybe the link that's in this issue. No, not this one. There was one another where there, I recall there were tables. Yep, these tables. Yep. Yep, this is the one. This one? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So I know we, we worked on this model over the course of two meetings. Uh, and I and I believe this is the this is the model that merges Elizabeth's toolkit with the template work that we had done prior. I'm like at a loss right now. So yeah, so there's okay, maybe we'll just we're, we're trying yeah. to, we're, I mean, yeah. I apparently, I, I didn't present it right, so. Okay. It's, I think it's not that you question the presentation. I think it's a question of, we're still building some of these and I, I think getting a sense of what is the template. Okay, so this is, this, what I'm hearing is this is the one I should be working off of, is this correct? That's my, that's my mm -hmm. recollection. 
Uh, does anyone else remember those meetings or is it just me? So I mean, I, I, these, no, this doesn't I look agree. consistent with what I've been referred to use as a template. So we have why it matters. Yep. Why it matters. Yes. User stories. Mm -hmm. User stories. Things you need. Mm -hmm. Things you need. Mm -hmm. Metrics that are in the model. But they, metrics. these metrics are in a temp, like a tabular format or a form that needs more definition than. Yeah. So what I was saying is, this is like kind of a crude version. Of so, the, so that of the, when you say metrics in the model, you might want to say metric and then why. Like, what piece of the puzzle is that metric completing for you? Is that? I like them? that because it yeah. falls in line with the metrics model for results and how. So. <laughs> what is this metric reporting and how is it doing that it's right there so a description of why this metric is important in the metrics model but, but i still want to add one more part to to show how to how to use this metrics model as example uh, as a, as i showing in the, in the community activity so people come here they they would like to use uh, this metrics model in their own community ma com community. So uh, here we talk about uh, why we need this metrics model and why it's important <clears throat> to include those metrics in this model. And the, the next question would come is, uh, is how to use that in, in the real case. So if we show in some examples in in this metrics model, I think it would, it would be very clear for all those which people. Is, right, which is what I think you're doing here. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. That's where I also propose that we might add a visual or implementation sections. Like in the model, we don't have, in the template, we don't have any visuals or any implementation. So as Yahuhi has <clears throat> presented his model, uh, there are some visuals. Hold on. Just, that, yeah. I, I just want to. So, Kevin, what is different about this from this outside of like having a table? So when you when you dig into the text, it looks like it's all there. Uh, my my question my question is more in regards to uh, why we're looking at the that separate toolkit document and how that connects back to this document. Uh, because I thought this document already accounted for the uh, that toolkit functionality. Okay, so we are, we don't need to worry about this one is what you're saying. Yes, or, or work on it because the, I mean, perhaps maybe take a peek real quick and see if there's anything on that document that we want to add to this other document. But I, I don't think it's in our best interest to spend time editing or doing work on the toolkit document because <clears throat> it's not a document we're planning on implementing. Like the the toolkit portion is something that we decided to add to the uh, to that template, and as we can see, it's it's there now, and it even has kind of those the difficulty levels rather than the than the time element. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so are we okay with this template as it's like currently as it stands? I mean, sure, we could. It's it make this prettier. Yeah, it's it's adequate. Maybe not everything that we would want, but we can move forward with it. I think. Yeah. Okay, so that. <clears throat> so then, I'll use this document and not this document. So then the same question would hold. Is this about the difficulty to measure? So there's, I think there is like difficulty. I don't know what was meant when we put, who put that in there? What did you mean? So it was, <laughs> I, could, I, I could, could interpret it many ways. So in that it box, in terms it's, of it's collecting the data. It was mm -hmm. difficulty in terms of collecting the data, how difficult it is to collect that data like... for that particular metric. Okay. 
I feel like no matter what you do, you mm -hmm. have to break down and untangle that because that's going to get real confusing real quick because people are going to have completely different data architectures. People are going to be in completely different areas in their measurement journey. Like you have to have a difficulty to implement prerequisites, measurements. I feel like that's a can of worms. When I look at that document, what I see is the difficulty is about running a survey. And then when we move on to the second one, the difficulty is about the observation checklist. So that's my, that's my understanding of what the, those difficulties are connected to. And then I think to Venya's point, like to run a survey for some communities might be a, an easier task. Yeah, if you got 300 users, that's one <clears> thing. <throat> if you have 20,000, that's another. And then what kind of survey? Are we talking about an open survey, semi-structured, structured? Are we talking about interviews, radio survey? I feel like the execution, the difficulty isn't really in the execution. Like, The difficulty is in what then? Just all sorts of things. Sorry, my brain decided to grind to a halt <laughs> mid-thought mid on that. I'm there for you. <laughs> um, sorry, um, I feel like if you are going to put difficulty, I feel like it should be difficulty to maintain. Can you keep doing this? And difficulty to start up. Can you actually get this going within a week or two weeks? I feel like those are like the two that we can put a difficulty on, but difficulty to execute seems too variable. What do people think of that? I think even for the same thing, for example, for the startup, for the different community, they have different share, uh, they have the different background. The difficulty level is different for those communities. I think this, this term for the communities, it's not that useful. I kind of like something more useful mm -hmm. would be what do you need to have in place before you start attempting to execute this? Exactly. So for example, a prerequisites. I, yeah. And I think so, that's in that that's in there. I think at a, at a I think these these difficulty <clears throat> levels are really kind of at a at a high level though. I, I think we're maybe thinking about this too much. All right. So running a survey difficulty medium, like I think that's compared to the the difficulty of uh, doing some heavy data analysis, right? Maybe that's maybe that's maybe that's considered difficult and this is medium. And then when you go down to this observation checklist, it's really just asking people in your community that uh, are we are we overthinking this? Can, can it just be easy, medium and difficult at a very high level and just say, you know what, we're we're really not getting into the details of it because we're not going to tell you how to run a survey or build a piece of software or do data analysis. We're just kind of telling you that you you need to, you so then maybe, need to think about that thing. And if you have the skills to do it, do that medium thing. And if you don't have the skills to do it, do the easy medium thing. At that point, well, could we just dispense with it? So yeah, I still I think, think so. I still think we need either example. Yes, I am. Oh, totally I really think I'm getting it. to that, Yahui. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with the examples. Otherwise, they start looking at these descriptions and the audience. Then they didn't get to the incentive sense on these metrics or on yes. the whole metrics model. And I think there's a tremendous amount of value in not only the metrics model example that you provide as a whole, which is right here. I think this is the entire metrics model. Is that not? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then you take it down like. For yeah, metric for each metric. single metrics, yeah. yes. And you even provide, this is what you're talking about right now, isn't it? About providing yeah. this type of description. And I, I agree. Um, I was just trying to work through some of this before adding that. Because I, I think there's a, a tremendous amount of value in this as well. 
So, uh, so for me, because I have deployed the Grim Lab uh, on my site for for the different communities, so for me it's pretty pretty easy to set up the whole thing to start collecting the data right. just before I I get everything ready for the metrics model. I already did the design it and I start calling data. But for the for the other people, they like like Vinda said, maybe they they haven't prepared for the right. data platform collection. <clears throat> so it's it's really depends on different situation. But but uh, I think let's that was con 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 consume that uh, suppose that uh, if everything is ready, what people want to say, they want to see the result or if it will work effectively with this metrics model. So that's the, the, the final goal for the people. They Agreed. want to use this metrics model. So if we, like, what do people think if we got rid of that? Just get rid of it. Because if we make it too high level, it may lose any utility. Um, I, I see ahead. three options. Go ahead. Get rid of it, break it down, or recategorize it into a different kind of mode. Because instead of saying this is an easy metric to integrate, you could focus on who would be most easily able to integrate it. So you could say this is a metric a beginner could do. This is a metric an intermediate could do. So we just change the locus of the difficulty from the metric to the people we expect to use it. That's an interesting idea. What do people think of that? I prefer that. I, I guess I would prefer that terminology to the the medium. So yeah, beginner, intermediate, expert would be yeah. a better a better way to think of this. Yeah, I like that because even when like in Yahui's case, who has Grimoire Lab deployed, like I, there's no way I would call that. I, I wouldn't call this community activity like beginner, <laughs> even. Even though it might be fairly straightforward for Yahui, um, this has taken, I think, a lot of skill and thought for deploying Grimoire Lab. So this might be a intermediate or expert. Order. There's sure. another option of the size and infrastructure expected of the community using the metric. So you could say <clears> this <throat> is for a startup, this is for a small community, a scaling community, or a large community. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we would be able to uh, to figure that out when we're creating these, though. I think the, figuring out the the context uh, might be it might just be too difficult. Every metric should have a target audience. Oops. But that that level the level of the level of persona or target audience that you're talking about. <coughs> not just the community manager, but also the size of the project or other. I think when we when we get into those context weeds, I think that's too much. So at a, at a high level, we say a community in, uh, manager may be interested in this, but trying to set the context more specific than that, I, I don't know if that would be helpful uh, for these metrics. Then you do think that can, oh, go ahead, Kevin. I was, they just, they need to be more generalized, I think. Then you do you think this helps at all with this user stories? I don't know how well you can see that on my screen. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Um, I think the user stories uh, works perfectly fine. I don't think we really need to um, pull it out, but if we wanted to keep the difficulty, we would just want to base it on either the user or the community that it's being implemented is okay. all I'm trying to say. So, like these, the beginner, intermediate, and expert would be like, this is for a beginner community manager kind of thing. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, so the beginner, intermediate, expert would be, uh, the locus would be on the person <coughs> expected to maintain it mm -hmm. and build it. Um, the other way that you could do that is you could say, this is for a community that's just starting out or something like that. If you were to do the user journey or the user stories, I wonder if it would make more sense for this specific thing, because all I'm seeing here is a basic, simple abstraction before you ever get into a metric. Is this even worth my time right now? Yeah. And if that's what you're looking to answer with this difficulty question, I want to know how difficult that's going to be for me 
and whether it's going to be helpful on the output for the community that I'm controlling. So you should describe either the community or the person. OK. Fair. All right. So this is really helpful. Thank you, everybody. So I think this, like why the metric is important in the model, Danielle, I'll get to your points too. But the proximate difficulty, I think we've kind of shifted the locus to the person. I think that was a really cool idea. Um, specific ways to produce the metric. So we would suggest <laughs> just kind of like the skinny end, right? Like here's surveys or interviews, or you're probably going to have to deploy Grimoire Lab, which is cool. All right. So I, I think we're good there. And then I wanted to bring up Yahui's point, which is, and this is, I had tried to capture this um, here, right? So sample evaluations and the overall metric. So Yahui had provided <clears throat> for the community activity metric model, it's comprised of however many different metrics, 10, 12, something along those lines. Some number of metrics. 13. 13. <clears throat> 13. <laughs> Lucky number. I got I was going, I was going in the right direction. Um, and so there's an overall calculation for the metric model, which is right here, which is actually similar to like a gold badge for DEI, for the DEI badging program. It's a final thing. And that final thing is here for Yahui. So this is the overall representation of the metric model. And correct me if I'm wrong, Yahui, but this is how yeah. I read through this. Okay. Yeah. Yahui also provides an analysis of each individual metric with the description of why, how, actually not why, but how you might go about reading the results as an example here. Correct? Am I still yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah. Correct. So <clears throat> the question would be, do we want to add to the template? We would add it like for metric one, for metric two, and so on and so forth. Plus an overall example of what the metric model would look like collectively. So like in the case of DEI event badging, the overall metric would look like a gold badge. You know what I mean? It would, it would look like, like that. Like that's an example of what this, what the metric model looks like in its final form, so to speak. And in Yahui's case, it's this. So what do people think about like including what an example of what the metric model could look like deployed with a description of it? I'll just start there without metric by metric, just starting with the, the overall metric model. Include, not include. I, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain here because sure. if I remember correctly, when we did the social currency metric system, now the social currency metric, um, that was required two years ago. Yeah. I, so Venya, a lot has changed over those two years as um, just in the sense of, I think the social currency metric system was not even think. I know it was one of the most complex metrics we had. Mm -hmm. It's a metrics it was, model. Yeah. yeah, it really is a metrics model. Yeah, I, yeah, I qualify the there. And if I remember, yeah. like, I, I didn't have time to commit to it. So I was already building individual yeah. metrics for that system. And for each of those metrics as well, it was expected to look at what a very salient example yeah. would be. So I feel like that's just been a thing we've always done as a part of the conversation and discussion building metrics anyway. We have. So, and then back two years ago, we didn't have metrics models at all. So it's just, it's about whether or not now that we have these metrics models as like an official thing, we, we've always kind of had them because other metrics, not just this social currency model. 
Um, other metrics are actually metrics models themselves we're coming to learn <laughs> that we have actually released as metrics. But the, the question would be, should we, as we release metrics models, kind of provide kind of this, an example of what it could look like in practice, you know, because obviously not everybody's is going to look like that. But Yahui has taken the time to to show us what that would look like as a collective whole. And then also, I think, don't you provide an overview of kind of how to read this? I think you talk about project A is kind of, it's a little hard to take a look at because it's less consistent than project B. You know what I mean? In terms of patterns. I think the thing I really like about this is that it, it further solidifies the reasons that we're bringing these together. Mm -hmm. And this is why, this is like the meat of it. This is the heart of it, you know, is the overall picture that we're trying to paint the, yep. to answer the question, the high level question. So I think it, I love it. I, I yeah, I would want to see that in every metrics mm -hmm. model is that, that visual. Okay, right on. That's my vote. Yep. I have a question. So we are developing the model, but we don't have the deployed state for every model we are developing. We are developing based on the, some scenarios, some assumptions, some feedback, or but not every model is deployed. So should this be included or should this be an optional aspect of being there in the template? It's a good question. And um, it's a good question. So the, the, the point being is that this is deployed this one's deployed, but they're not all deployed. And so we can't show this for, you know, here's our list. <laughs> As we're developing metrics models, we can't necessarily show it for everything. So, so is, is, is the question about the requirement that we depro deploy the model? Yeah, and like be able to show it in. So, I mean, there, there are some easy ways that we could deploy these models, for example, Jupyter Notebooks, which we have uh, listed in the, the okay. little thing there. So we we could realistically have the expectation that every model that we create is deployed. In some form or fashion. <clears throat> form or fashion. I mean, we could. I, I'm not voting yay or nay, okay. uh, but, but I believe that it would be possible to make that a requirement. OK. And, so, and, uh, and, uh, do, you, and do you actually, sorry, please. I do. Um, hi. Um, and, and we could use the simple, uh, simple repo to store our online state. And um, I lose. And um, there's there are there still have some, um, uh, open source, uh, open source community to store, like the GitHub, GitHub online date. And we could use this uh, uh, this date, the the real date, and um, to uh, express our ex um, to express our results of matrix uh, module, and maybe use online online notebook, or maybe use uh, the other online tool to show our results. Agreed. So it sounds like you're kind of in favor of working towards a working implementation of a model as well. Is that correct, June? Uh, mm. I, I think I, uh, I think I think we don't have to care about uh, what kind of tools to to yeah. collect yeah. or analyze data. <laughs> we just uh, uh, per presume that mm -hmm. we have data already. Mm -hmm. We have uh, because we have data schema <laughs> here. And uh, we have online tools to express uh, the meanings uh, by the visualization because there are some online tools to show up the visualizations. Uh, 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 for example, notebook and uh, some other tools like e-charts. So um, we can uh, show uh, sample data here. Uh, for example, this sample data is coming from the chaos. I mean, the, the data is a, it's a sample data of the chaos community. And also, you can provide some other uh, uh, sample data, and then you can you can show up the 
visualization by, by some online tools. So people who start looking at this matrix model, they can simply import this sample data and to deploy this data as a visualization as the final results. They can, they can find out uh, the interesting things or, or inside analysis. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I prepare some simple example. Uh, put it the link on the on the doc document. <clears throat> okay, sounds good. Vinod, I have yeah. I have two comments. The first is for releasing a model. That means we have to wait until it is a deployable state so that we incorporate it in the document and then show it to the community. Second, uh, not everything can be deployed. Like we have those run a survey or do, uh, so, so for example, a survey cannot be easily deployed. It, it takes time or it, it is not, uh, it cannot be done from our end, but it is done from the user who is deploying it. So what will happen in those scenarios? I have, a, I have a suggestion for that. We could just put in some mock data just <clears> as a <throat> sample to, to get the visualization out there. You know, mm -hmm. put, the put the survey together, pretend to run it on, our, on, a, on a community, just put in a bunch of fake data just for the sake of um, having that being able to include it. And I also, until like, maybe we could use the chaos community because a lot of the survey questions we are gonna be asking the community. So, I mean, that's a, that's an option or as um, Benia suggested to have a case study implementation for each metric model that we can use as a sample. But I think we could just use uh, mock data for those surveys. We can, we can actually implement a simplified version and they could really pick any BI that they want, but Data Studio, Tableau and BI are all built specifically to say, hey, really quickly visualize this data. So you can kind of build a litmus test that says, is this on? Does it work? Is it reporting true? Is it reporting useful? Is it reporting accurate? And if it passes to a certain degree, then you can publish. Um, yeah, we're, we're trying, um, we just uh, um, keep our data to real and, uh, and the other people, um, think that this uh, this metric is is real in in the uh, repo maybe I, I need to explain that uh, the, the sample data it's kind of different with just uh, the, the, the mock data because the mock data maybe cannot explain the the, the, the situation <clears throat> behind the, the, a community but if we take a, a real community for example uh, I mean f uh, take uh, chaos for example, they truly know the, the history behind this community. Then if this uh, has some, you know, the wave change or, 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 uh, the, or the, the wave have a, a pattern. So we, we exactly know what happened uh, be, uh, along the history. But if we have a mock data, which have no meaningless, uh, which, uh, which is meaningless, then we couldn't say any, any, any meaningful things uh, using this visualization. So I prefer using some sample data uh, extracting from like chaos or some other community <clears throat> that you, you would like to, 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 to provide. So maybe in the cases of trace data, yeah. like what you're using here, Yuhui, we provide, it's not mock data, yeah. it's actual sample community data. And yeah, we got this. And then for the surveys, I mean, what if we simply provided the questions and not even fake data? Yeah, I prefer that if this community would like to share and open up this data as a sample data, then we could use their data as we create. Okay. So. Yes. <clears throat> um, Elizabeth, what do, you, what do you think about just providing survey questions, not fake data against the survey questions. Not, I'm not talking about the trace data here. I'm right, right. No, uh, yeah, and I, I do 100% agree with Koi <clears throat> um, that if we did have sample data, it would be mo way more meaningful 
because then we could show like for in the, I'm just thinking of the the welcomingness metric model that is a mix of survey stuff and I think yeah. trace data and other things mm -hmm. um, like how we would show um, that how the answers to this these questions if you lay them on top <laughs> of the trends that you see you know like how that how that works because I think that's what we're trying to do here is to to try to bring a, a deeper interpretation of the results for for the user so that they can see but like if if we just have survey questions then it's there's no way for someone to to understand how the answers to those questions can be put on top of the other data or integrated in with it. Am I am I even making? I'm probably not even making. No, no, no. You, you're a hundred percent making sense, <laughs> like a hundred percent. So, I think uh, the the point being is that some of our metrics models are trace data, and some of them are interview questions, and some of them are trace data and interview questions. <laughs> Kind of mixed and, together, yeah. yeah. Mixed together, <laughs> and yeah. I mean, I kind of go back to to Venya's point earlier. Maybe we do need a community to be our be our case study, you know. And if we don't have that yet, then maybe it's still a work in progress. I don't know. Right, but I really like the real world implementation of everything, including surveys. Yeah. If we could swing it, because um, it's hard to give a metrics model and say, okay, so go out and collect these six trace data things, run this survey, and do these interviews, and then. And then we're done. We're not going to tell you how to bring it all together. Yeah. <laughs> you figure it out. <clears throat> Just want to let you know we're all counting on you. <laughs> we're going to tell us how it went. Right. That's not helpful. So I think in the cases of maybe the trace data, like what we're looking at here with, with Yahoo's work, that's, this works quite well. Yeah. Yeah. And I would think that would be the more low hanging fruit that we can focus on those, the, the easier ones. To, to deploy and get a few out there in the world. And then in the meantime, maybe figure out what we're gonna do with these surveys. If maybe we run it on chaos community right. ourselves or, or somebody else. And then- That's what- uh, Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kevin. That's what, I, that's what I've been wanting to say for a little bit here is that we do have, we do have access to the chaos community. So our, our community would be an excellent platform to do the, if we need sample data from surveys, we could we could grab it from our community and we could mix that with our trace data. Uh, however, to Elizabeth's point earlier, I think if, for some of these models that do mix uh, uh, trace data with uh, survey data, I think it would be okay to to mix, you know, some some fake data for the survey answers in with the uh, with the trace data just so that we can see what that would look like. I think that would be okay. Uh, yeah, I th I think we still can work. Can can work. Sorry, uh, I want to uh, support <clears throat> your point because I, I we still can convert this survey data to the to some metrics data as a table or something. We still uh, uh, be able to to value uh, visualized as as a uh, as 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 I shown here. So it's possible to, to do so, but uh, we still find a, a way to show that. But I think it's a further question. So I, I still think uh, and that uh, we could use in this sample data, uh, you know, I just uh, with uh, using the uh, real case, and together with uh, with this visualization uh, uh, show up. So I have a question of clarification. Mm -hmm. um, are we planning on requiring this before a metric goes live or before it's testing? Um, or is this just one of those expectations for like within three months of a metric going live, have a case study for it? We haven't, we haven't decided. Yeah, I think, I think that's kind of the conversation in my mind, that's the conversation we've been having. Yeah. So oh, okay. whether, although, although we did get sidetracked a little bit, <laughs> okay. so, uh, then yeah, I'm not sure. I, but, <laughs> Or, or maybe we only <coughs> have the, the example date and the original date. Maybe some example schema or some something. We we could. I mean, my inclination is to have this prepared before it's released. That's just my. We could. Yeah. We could go the social media route and we could publish a metric and then we can give an additional badge for metric verified 
with a case study and it can publish with or without one, but it receives additional accreditation if it has one. Are we accrediting ourselves? <laughs> it, we are. We're self-certifying. Definitely the wrong term, but yeah. like my brain we're is self-certifying. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Um, to, to we are at 6.51, or we're at nine minutes to the hour. So there was, Vinod, did you have one last comment? Because I, I have to go pick up my parents at the airport. So I know, we are good. I was just adding to Vinyas. But, OK. Yeah. Um, my head's about to explode. This has been a very mind filling. This has been an extremely helpful conversation for me. And I think a lot of these points were the. These were these are just great. So thank you. We have another mind exploding conversation for next time, which is to define what a metric is, what a metric model is and what a focus area is. You can blame Kevin for that one. <laughs> and I, I would like to point out that Kevin is also wearing his chaos t shirt today along with elizabeth so i would like to give a huge thank you for the for that so we didn't even coordinate like we no didn't i and i wore mine yesterday i'm a little bummed that i wasn't wearing yeah <laughs> wearing mine today um all right so i think maybe one of the things that i will do is i'll try to capture this conversation into this thing a little bit okay. better um, <clears throat> Just because I think we've added the metric model now, which I think is really a great idea. Um, and then we can talk about that next time. Sounds good. Yeah, I think there's some some formatting and uh, an organization that we need to capture in this as well. Yeah, this particularly, yeah. that part, I'm sure, is what you're looking at. Yep. Yep. Okay, right on. Everybody, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. <coughs> thank, you thank you. Bye. See you later. Here. It was thank good seeing guys. everyone again. Yeah, likewise. Bye. Bye.